What's going on Clarity Coders? In this video, I'm gonna show you my new project which is creating a fully automated YouTube Shorts channel. Now this does everything. It creates the video, it adds sound, it adds comments and text over the video itself and then posts it to YouTube daily. I'm gonna show you how to get this set up so you can have it fully working by the end of this video and how to manipulate the code. Now if you create something that's super creative and you get over a thousand views on the channel, let me know in the comments below and I will link to the channel in the description. If you're the first to do it, I'll give you a very special reward. And these rewards are gonna be higher and higher as this channel keeps growing. So make sure to hit the subscribe button and hit that bell so you don't miss out on anything. Let's not waste any more time and jump right in. All right, so I'm gonna show you how to get started in this project. What we're gonna do is we're gonna clone our repository. So you can find the link to the GitHub down in the description below. And we're gonna to go to our desktop, open up Git Bash. If you don't have that, you can find the link to Git Bash in the description below as well. And we're gonna do Git clone and clone the project down. So now once we have the project cloned down, I'm gonna use Visual Studio Code. Again, it doesn't matter what you use, this is just my preference and I'm gonna open that folder that we just cloned down. And now you'll see that we have the project set up here. Now there's a little bit of setup here, so watch this in full and you shouldn't miss anything. First thing we're gonna do is open up a new terminal. Again, I recommend you use a virtual environment, so if you don't have a virtual environment, you can do pip install virtual env. So now to actually create the virtual environment, we're gonna do virtual env space env. And then we're not actually in the environment right now. So we wanna do source space env slash script slash activate and these tab complete. And now you'll notice in parentheses it says env. So now we're actually in our virtual environment. Now what we need to do is install our requirements. I have them saved in a requirements.txt file. So all we're gonna to have to do is do pip install dash r requirements dot text. Now this will run us through all the re requirements we need to install. Now our automated YouTube bot is going to gather video data from Reddit and then it's gonna post it using the YouTube API. So that's where our setup comes in here. We're gonna install the requirements but we then need to set up our Reddit cred credentials and we actually need to create a YouTube channel if you don't have one already and also activate the API. So now you'll see our requirements have finished installing. We can go ahead and try to run this. We know it's not gonna run because we don't have anything set up. Now again, if you're in Visual Studio Code, if you wanna use the play button in the top right corner, you gotta make sure it's pointing towards your ENV environment. So if you hold Control Shift P, you can see where it's pointing. And right now it is pointing to the ENV slash script slash python.exe, which is what we need. If it's pointing somewhere else, you need to point it at your virtual environment if you set up a virtual environment. Now you'll see here that it's missing the Reddit credentials, which makes sense. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna hop over to this website. So I'm gonna assume that you have a Reddit account and you're logged in. If you don't, sign up for a Reddit, Reddit account and log in. It can be a burner account, it doesn't matter. So once you get logged in, signed up and all that jazz, I want you to head over to this URL. Now once you're on this URL, you're gonna hit this button to create an application. Now these are really important, so pay attention to the buttons that we're selecting here. We wanna make sure we're naming our app, and the name doesn't really matter too much, and then you wanna make sure that you're selecting the radio button for script. And the other stuff doesn't really matter, you have to enter a redirect URI, so we're just gonna enter localhost. But make sure you hit script, if you don't, you're gonna have some issues there. Now once we press create app here, you're gonna see that we get an ID and a secret, which is what we need to read data on Reddit. Now we're not gonna post anything with this bot or anything like that, so we don't need your username, we don't need a password, we just need this client ID and secret. Now once we've done that, we need to create a .env file. Now the ignore file is gonna make sure that you don't upload this to GitHub or anything, so we're gonna create a client underscore secret and we're gonna set it equal to the client secret we are given here. So we'll paste that in. We can just copy this line. We're also going to need to grab the client ID. So we head back to that page and that is this value here. 
and we'll paste that in as our client ID. Now if we save this and go back to main.py, I'm just going to show you what would happen if you forgot something. You'll see here it says you still need a user agent. So again, we're just reading our errors. We're making sure we follow through if we're getting errors and seeing what it says. So this user agent doesn't really matter, but you have to set it. So we're just going to call it AutoTube bot version 1.0. Now we can pick out what Reddit we want to build our video off. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy something from dank memes here. So now that we have that changed around, we can go ahead and uncomment this update video, which is actually upload video. I'll probably fix that in future releases of the code. But if we try to run this, as you can imagine, it's probably going to air out because it doesn't have a YouTube channel to post to yet. So we know that's going to be an issue. But there's one other thing that we have to do. And again, I'm kind of walking through this process and letting it hit errors. So if you're ever working with a code source or a GitHub that doesn't have this type of video tutorial, you're not going to hit a hard wall. You're going to be able to get through these errors. So now eventually you come to an error that looks like this. So what's happening here is we're doing text overlay in MoviePy and you actually need to download and install a library or a program on your computer in order for that to work. So that program is called Image Magic. So again, the link to that program is going to be in the description. It's pretty simple to install. It's just a click next type of thing on Windows, but they also have a Linux and Mac version. And then we'll go ahead and pick the newest release and install that. Now, if you're on Windows, you're going to want to remember where this installs at. So you're going to click through the installer. I'm not going to show you it here, but it's going to install probably in program files or something like that. And we're going to need to grab that location later on Windows for a little fix. So you notice in Windows, it's in program files, image magic. And then you can see the exe here. Now we have to actually edit the source on this library, which isn't great. Um, it's kind of a hacky fix that they have right now. So we're going to go into our ENV. We're going to go into the lib and then we can go down to image magic. We're going to go to config underscore defaults dot pi. And here we can change this where it's pointing to get that URL that we had before or get that address path that we had before. So I'm going to delete this out. We're going to escape these slashes. So anywhere there's a single slash, we're going to put two slashes. And of course, wrap it around quotes. Now we also need the name of the exe at the end. So just to make sure we don't mess up, we're going to rename that, copy it and paste it in here. Now that should be good to go. So now it's going to be able to create the text on top of our movie as well. So now if we run this program in my mind, it should create us a video.mp4. You can see it was downloading the images and some data files here in our data folder. So what we can do is we can go ahead and delete this folder. You don't have to, uh, but just so we get it starting fresh again here. I'm going to clear my terminal and we can go ahead and run this again. Now you'll notice here that it gets farther. It actually starts creating our video. Now it is going to fail to upload it to YouTube because we haven't hooked up our YouTube channel. You may not even have a YouTube channel yet. So we'll let this finish. You'll see that it's going to post the video in five minutes. I just put that in so you could review the video really quick before I post it, but it is going to fail here. So we'll let it fail and then we can watch the video and talk about that and then we'll get our YouTube channel set up. All right, so you'll see here that it did fail. So it's showing us some errors here. And if you scroll up, it's because we're missing our setup for our YouTube channel, which is fine. So you will notice it did create a video.mp4. So let's take a look at that just for the fun of it and see what that looks like here. So we'll reveal it in the file explorer here. We'll open it up and you can see that on animated GIFs it works. Now it's scaling these down, so that causes some weirdness sometimes. And then it's pulling in the top comment and then the top reply below that. Now I'll talk about the code a little more after we get it set up and posting, but essentially you get the idea here. There's a lot of improvements and a lot of things that you can really do to this library to make it cool, I think. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a new 
file called client underscore secrets dot json make sure you spell it right client underscore secrets and you got to do this exactly the same my script's going to look for it now we can head over to the youtube api and we can grab a copy of their client secrets file and we'll use that to start out you can see here it is we'll copy that and we can paste it into our clients underscore secrets and then we can walk through the process of actually getting your client id and secret so what i'm going to suggest you do and this is what i did i'm not posting these to my normal channel so i would separate this i'm going to go ahead and create a completely fresh google account and then i'm going to create a youtube account on that so i won't walk you through that process but you're going to need a google account of some sorts so i'm going to go ahead and set one up here and i'll see you on the other side of creating this account all right so now i have my account created so hopefully you have one too and you're logged in it doesn't matter what account it is again i would separate it but that's up to you now if you don't have a youtube channel a page you're always going to use is studio.youtube.com and once we go here you'll see that we don't have a youtube account right now so we need to create one so we're going to go to youtube.com in the top right i'm going to click on my little circle here and I'm gonna hit create channel. Now you can call your channel whatever you want. You can upload a picture, do as you wish. How about clarity memes? All right, now we can go ahead and create our channel. And you'll see here, as you expect, now we have a studio.youtube.com, but we don't have any videos, which makes sense. And we're going to go to developer.google.com i'll have the link down below i'm not quite sure on that but you're just going to hit the accept agreements and that sort of thing and then we're going to select project we're going to create a new project now this is to get our youtube api so we can upload things you can call it whatever you want i'm going to call it auto memes this takes just a bit so it's going to do its thing and then it'll say blah 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 we're gonna go ahead and select that project once it pops up now we're signed up but we have to turn on whatever api's we want to use with our google account so we're gonna hit the enable api's and service button that's up here i just search for the youtube the youtube <laughs> i'm old <laughs> and then we're gonna select youtube data api v3 then we're going to hit enable now once we got it we are good to go there we want to create credentials we're not going to hit create credentials here so i'm going to go back to the dashboard it's a little confusing and from here we can click go to api overview and on this page we're going to hit credentials now we want an oauth 2.0 so we're going to go ahead and hit create credentials above oauth client id and then if it's your first time you're going to have to configure your app's consent so it's very important to hit external here so hit external and hit create you're gonna to have to name your app and give it a user support email none of this really matters this is kind of a test application we're not using this for any purposes other than our own so I forgot my email here clarity dank memes at gmail.com oh that's embarrassing it's a drop down I could have just selected it we're gonna scroll down here authorized domains none of this matters we can go ahead and enter our developer contact information and remember through all this i think it goes without saying but make sure you're entering your details not mine now we have to enter a scope this is important so we're going to add a scope to this api we're going to again search for youtube oops i'm searching for the browser here it's in this search box here we're going to search for youtube and we're gonna use the one that says manage your YouTube account so we if you use just the view your YouTube account it's not gonna work so click the manage your YouTube account 
and we're going to update that. Should be all good here. We can hit save and continue. Add test users. You can go ahead and add your own test user here. So again, whatever that email address is that you set up. I forgot mine again. Clarity Dank Memes. I'm getting old, guys. I can't, I can't remember 80 different email addresses. Add. Save and continue. Now, after all that, we can come back here and actually create our credentials. So we're going to go create credentials again. OAuth client ID. We are going to select a desktop app. I'm, you might be able to use web app too, but uh, we're using a desktop app. So let's select that. You can name it whatever you want. And bam, now you have your client ID and your client secret here. Whoop, whoop. So we're going to copy that. Again, you're using your details. I'm going to paste it in here to client ID and then your client secret. Now remember, these are going into client underscore secrets dot JSON here. Save that. I'm going to delete this data folder again. It has something in it so we don't post the same GIF over and over again which I'll talk about a little when I walk through the code here in a second, but we're gonna delete it for now so it creates whatever the best memes are for the day and posts it to our channel. Now we're ready to try and run this again. Let's go ahead and run it. Hopefully this time it's successful. This first time it is going to ask you to authenticate. So if you leave this script running, it's gonna post a video every 24 hours and you only have to authenticate via browser the first time when you create a login token so we'll see that once it creates a movie it's going to ask us to log in here okay now that it's done again it says posting video in one minute you can adjust that sometimes i like to look at it before to see if uh i want to change anything like one for here for this video that it's posting here it said something about died with a smile on his face and I know YouTube kind of freaks out about using different things in the title like death or curse words or things like that. So I might want to change that before it automatically posts it. Uh, but in general, it'll work on its own. So I just give you some time to review it if you would like. So now you'll see it tried to upload it. It says it needs to be authenticated. So you'll notice I have a flashing browser down here. It says, what account do you want to use? Make sure you choose your burner account if you set that up. And we're going to go continue. And then do you want to allow it to auto post? Yes. So it did say it was an unauthorized app. But remember, this is your own credentials. We just didn't authenticate our own app. So it's not a big deal. So you'll see authentication successful. And now it's actually uploading our file. And now you can see it says the video ID that was successfully uploaded here. Now that video ID we can use to actually find the video. Obviously you can find our video on the channel. You can find it, uh, search, whatever you want to do. So let's see if we can find it here. It sometimes takes a while to show up in YouTube studio here. So I'll try and refresh, but I don't see it yet. So let's just go to YouTube and we'll click on a different video and we'll just paste in that ID. It'll show up here eventually. And you can see, look at that. We posted a video on YouTube. All right. Now you might notice here, it does say that the video is private and in the code, we're trying to upload public videos. So a couple issues here. Sometimes YouTube will flag a video as private even if you try to upload it as public if there's something questionable in the title. So that may be our issue here because we have died in the title. They might not like that. And then the other, if we go back to studio here, what I want you guys to do is go down to settings. And from here when this pops up, you can go down to channel and then advanced settings. And here you can mark 
they all never post a video that is made for kids. So if you don't explicitly tell them on every video, I think sometimes it'll throw, or maybe always, it'll throw it to a private video. You have to legally tell them if it's a video that's made for kids. Now, if you're pulling data from Reddit, you sure as hell are not posting videos for kids. So we can all go ahead and say no. Set this channel as not made for kids. I will never upload content that's made for kids. So I'm gonna go ahead and save that and close. And now that should allow you when you're posting videos for them to be made public. Okay, so we're gonna do a code walkthrough here to kind of help you get started in manipulating this project a little bit. This is the main program of the AutoTube bot. So if you open up the file explorer, this is gonna be our main.py, the other utility, files are inside the utilities folder i'll walk through this really quick basically we're going to create a bot we're going to set while equal to true so it runs 24 7. we're going to get our posts and you can pass in a subreddit that you want to use to get the posts so right here i have memes we're going to create the data folder if it doesn't exist that's this folder here so you can delete this and it'll start fresh then it's going to go through each of the posts that it gathered. So it's going to gather like 100 posts from whatever subreddit that you put in there. And then we're going to pick out five of those in this case to make a short because it's going to make a 60 second video. You can change that in this project to make a longer video if you like or whatever. But that's how it's set up right now. Now it's also going to use the default size for short videos on youtube so if you wanted to change the video size you could pass in a tuple with whatever video size you wanted it to be but right now it's going to make that short video which is like the the taller video then i wanted to put the date in my title for some reason i thought that would be useful so i basically created some helper functions to create a nice date for creating the video title and then we create the movie itself. Then here we have a little dictionary that we use to set up the data needed to upload the video to YouTube. So we got the file name, the title of the video. This is something you could change as well. Right now it's using the first Reddit post title as the name of the title. Now that this gets you in trouble sometimes because sometimes it's not appropriate or different things like that, but that's kind of what I went with there. You could also grab a random title if you wanted. You could hard code something like I did back here. So I just hard coded and placed in the date string. So it says dankest memes and comments and then the date of the video. So it'll say like November 1st. Then just some helper stuff here. I print out the title. I say I'm gonna post it in five minutes. So this is if you're testing and wanna watch the video before it posts it to make sure it's either appropriate or you like it or whatever. So that's just there to give you some time to review. If you don't want it, you can comment that out. Then it's uploading the video and then it's sleeping for 24 hours. So some of the other stuff in here that you could mess around with there's a music folder with different songs in it that add to the video and also a notification sound that you can change around. And if you wanted to add those, you could look in the util folders to the create movie. And you'll see here, we have some different helper items for creating the movie. We got return a comment. So this makes sure a comment isn't too long to show up on the screen itself. Then we have a create movie class. If you can get down here, you see where we pick a music file. So you see it grabs a random file that's music and then zero through four for the number. So if you notice back in our music folder, you'll notice each, it says music zero, one, two, three, and four. So you could add another song to this like music five and then add zero to five here. And that would add more music selection choices. You could do something similar with the notification sound as well. Right now there's only one notification sound. You could add more if you'd like and do a random grab like I did here. Let's take a quick look at the Reddit bot.py as well. So this folder has a lot, or this class has a lot going on with it, but basically it's taking in our Reddit connection information that we have set up, and then it's setting up some data paths. And then the most important function here is this get posts. 
So right now it's defaulted to day and grabbing 100 posts. So if you have a subreddit that's not as active, you might wanna change this to week or something like that. We could have even add a parameter up here so you could pass that in. But right now it's set up to day and grabbing 100 posts. It's skipping any sticky posts. So I don't wanna grab the mod posts at the top. So I'm skipping over those. And then I'm appending each submission to a post list here. And then I'm returning that. Now when I'm saving the images, I'm making sure that they're either JPEG, PNG, or GIF. And I'm also skipping over GIF V because it's not, it gives me some issues when I try to scale it. So right now, if you use a subreddit, say that doesn't have a lot of images, it might find 100 posts and it might not find five images out of there to make your movie with. So you wanna use something that uses a lot of images, a subreddit that uses a lot of images. You can see that it's going through and picking the just the best comment on that video as well, and then the best reply on that video as well. Now I'm making sure that they're under a certain length because I don't want super long comments. And I also make sure HTTP is not in the comment because that means that there's some URL that they're sending or something like that, and I don't want to put that on my video. So I skip over those as well. And that's pretty much it. Then we're just creating a data file. So you can see if you look at the data folder here, it's set up by date, so it gives the date that you created this post, and then it gives your images it's using and the data folder itself where it can grab items out of. So that's pretty much it. You can edit this code and kind of make this bot whatever you want. As I said earlier in the video, we are having a contest, so if you do get a thousand over 1,000 likes, post it here as soon as you can, and I'll reward that user. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you guys liked it. If you don't want to miss out on any other contests, if you've seen this after somebody already won, hit the subscribe button and then hit that bell so you don't miss any videos. When I post them, watch them right away and you'll have the best opportunity to win these.